Let's talk about distance texture, a new type of procedural texture that came out with Vray 6 for Rhino as well as SketchUp, honestly quite quite recently at the time of recording this video. And ever since it came out I couldn't get my little fingers off of it. I tend to use it for every single project these days, so I feel like it's quite a quite a useful tool, honestly. And in this video, I'll guide you through like three different use cases uh, for it that I personally find to be most useful. Um, to showcase this, I have set up a little project right here, a little Rhino file that you can get if you become a Patreon supporter. So Patreon supporters do get all of the files of this channel for free. Well, not really free because at that point you are supporting the channel. But anyway, link in the video description if you want this file you know, to kind of follow along step by step. This file renders out like this, right? This is the scene that is rendered out. And as you can see, it's uh, nothing to write home about. And the reason for that is, you know, the, the, the foreground. The foreground is just crap. And that's on purpose, of course. So the main problem here is how the stones touch the ground. That is very bad. Also how uniform the ground texture is, you know, nothing's happening here. And also, like, there, there is um, the flatness of the ground. That's, that's the third problem, I guess. Right, so after we are done, we will have something that is a little bit closer to truth, something like this, uh, where you can see that the stones, this is after, before, before, after. The stones are actually blending. Oops. The stones are actually blending with the ground quite well. There is a pathway here. And there's, in, in general, like the foreground is more um, interesting to look at, right? So without any further ado, I guess we should jump right into it. Alright, so I guess before we begin, I will guide you very quickly through what we're dealing with in terms of the 3D model. I do have the landscape. I have a parcel of land right here that is assigned to, you know, as very fur object. Uh, so grass will grow here. And we have some scattering going on at the backdrop of uh, the proxies. One thing that I tend to do is separate out all of the meshes on which scattering is going to happen, including grass as well. And I tend to create a no render material for those plates or la like landscape portions, right? So that, you know, they, they don't uh, cost anything to copy, basically. The no render material can be created by just going to Vray Asset Editor, creating a new material, generic, Creating a new layer right here, or sorry, adding an attribute, I guess, to the material, choosing ray trace properties, expanding that, unticking all four tick marks, and now anything that you apply this material to, you know, no render this material to anything that you apply uh, to it is going to not render. I already have this material right here, so I'm not going to be creating another one. Uh, just a little tip. Okay, let's jump right into it. So the issue that we had was the seam between the stone and the ground. The, the dead seam was very, very active. With V-Ray Distance Texture, what, first of all, how it works is if I just have a plane, let me just create a quick rectangle here, and let's create a quick sphere here as well, like that. If I were to showcase, sorry, the distance texture, I would uh, create a material, generic. Let's say distance texture showcase. And for it, let's say I would apply it to the, to the plane, right? So let me hit render. First of all, let me isolate and then let me hit render just to showcase it. There we go. And now, for its color, here, I can choose, if I scroll down, I can choose distance. This is where distance texture is. It is a texture, right? 
where I can say that the, uh, the objects from which the distance is calculated are this, well, zoom out a little bit, are the sphere, right? So I'll select the sphere and I'll click on add objects. There we go. You can see already that there is this kind of very thin dark line appearing here. If I increase the distance, let's do like a meter, a thousand millimeters, you can see a gradient appear. And this is the strength of the distance texture in general. Let me hide the sphere for a bit. And this is how it works. You know, this is how it looks like right now. Just just like here. And if I were to, by the way, uh, let, let's do something that's add objects. There we go. Hide the two spheres. This is um, basically finding the intersection point and creating a gradient away from it. If we color the inside solid, my black, it does this, right? Typically, you will want an inverted version of this because white is positive, black is negative in, in terms of like masking of, of materials. So what you would do is you would invert this like that and you would say that inside color is actually white like that. And that's that's basically it. That's distance texture, right? We can use this quite well to mask out areas of our rocks as well as our landscape to create this kind of a moss effect. So let's say everywhere where the rock, let's say this rock, right? Everywhere where the rock meets the ground, I want to have like a area where the moss grows on the ground. How can I do this? Well, I would need to create a new material for the landscape. Let me just keep rendering this. One second. There we go. Zoom into that. I would need to create a new material for the landscape, right? And that material is going to be blend. Blend material. Not generic, but blend. Uh, and uh, I will call it landscape master. Master material, right? The base material is going to be the same material that I use for the landscape. And that is, I believe, uh, called like landscape moss light or something like that. Yes, landscape moss light. So here my base is going to be landscape moss light. But then if I click on the add layer button here, I can add another material on top, right? So let me just apply the landscape mas master on to my uh, landscape surface right, like that and then for the material I will use like a coat of a new material on top <clears throat> think uh, Photoshop layers right I will use landscape moss forest and now it kind of does a 50 50 blend uh, between the landscape moss light and landscape moss forest perhaps because both of these are green uh, I should switch to something like red I have like just a red color material set up here. It's nothing like, it is just red color, right? So for now, for testing, I will just show it with red. Then I go to blending mode, right? And here I will apply a distance texture. So here, distance, right? It creates this distance texture where I need to select my landscape. Oh, sorry, I need to select the rock and I need to click on add objects. So I add my rock as an object to the um, distance texture, right? So now the distance is, is measured from this rock. And then if um, I need this to be inverted, right? Just like we did before. So I need to switch these two colors around like that. You can already see a little uh, area appear here, but if I increase the distance, a hundred, a thousand perhaps, maybe two thousand, you can see this rock creates a gradient around itself. Now if I go back right here and I choose to, um, instead of red, I choose landscape moss forest, voila, <laughs> right? How cool is that? So you have uh, 
moss growing around the rock. So all I need to do right now is if I just show selected, show selected command, and I just choose the rocks that I want to deal with, these, I just select, pre-select these rocks, right? Four, I go to the distance texture and I just click on add objects, bam. We have gradients around each rock. As easy as that. Okay, so that is done. Now I will quickly do a, one more or two more blend materials for the rocks as well. Because if I were to zoom in now to here, let's say, let me turn off the Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, depth of field is turned off. Okay, never mind. <coughs> so, while here we, we have this kind of nice gradient, so there is a little bit of change in the material of the landscape, the rock itself is still, you know, the, it's it's pretty sharp, the corner, nothing nothing's really happening. So, I will create a blend material for the rock as well, right? So I have uh, rock one and rock two, two types of rocks. So I'll create two types of blend materials. Um, blend R1. What? Why is, why is this Japanese? Uh, R1. And then I'll just duplicate it. Blend R2. Rock one, rock two, right? So for R1, my base material is going to be rock 1. For R2, base material, rock 2. And I'll basically, I'll repeat the same process as what I've done with the landscape. So I'll skip ahead because, you know, it's, it's just a repetition. All right. So I have set up all of the materials and, and so on. And all of them are now all of the rocks are not using rock 1 or rock 2 materials, but rather they're using either blend R1, blend R2. I've replaced them. <clears throat> Except one thing. I didn't do one thing because I want to record this. So under my blending here, I do have the distance texture where I used some sort of a more reasonable value of 250. And here I do need to add objects right so what influences the gradient of the moss on the rock it's the landscape right so i do need to select the landscape and i need to click on add objects and once i do that you can see how that sweet sweet seam just disappears yeah that's that's what we want to see cool isn't it okay so now with this done I will just copy this and I'll use that for blend R1 as well, paste as copy. There we go. So technically this should also have a gradient. It does not. I believe we need to re-render. Let's try re-rendering. Yes. We had to re-render. It was freaking out. So now this works, but it's still rather flat, which will bring us to our second part of the, or our second use case, working with displacement maps. So for the landscape, I kind of want the area where the moss grows up, where the moss is growing, you know, here, I want it to lift up, like literally to, to go up and kind of build up a little bit, but in a bouncy way, if that makes sense. So what I'm gonna do, is I will create for the landscape, for the whole landscape, I will create a displacement map, right? So I select the landscape and I click on this add displacement properties to the selection button. Bam. It just slaps on. Well, th this is going to freak out, so I'll stop it for a second. It just slaps on this displacement modifier, I guess onto the landscape and I'll just call it uh, moss displace. There we go. 
So basically it's just a normal displacement that lifts everything everything up in this case by one millimeter no 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 we will use something a little bit a little bit more reasonable um i wonder what i guess let's try 200 20 centimeters up that that's that's a big number uh 200 millimeters up um no other um properties here or settings here really matter that much in this case keep continuity doesn't matter because it's a single surface landscape but then for normal um, or displacement we will use a distance texture again distance texture <coughs> and our objects that influence the landscape you know the bumpiness are going to be the same rocks right so i just select these rocks add objects bam all of these are added and now I will need to render I guess because I don't remember which part is which we'll figure it out don't worry so let's wait for it to calculate it's it finished calculating let's zoom in here all right so it's kind of going down right so you can see that ring right there let me zoom in even even closer there we go so that ring right there we don't uh, th that is this black area right here so that's not what we want we want uh, the inside to be solid and the inside <laughs> well now it's a hole but the inside color to be white now it's going up and the near color to be white while the far color needs to be black so now the gradient is a little bit on the you know a little bit intense so for the distance let's try doing like the same 2000 millimeters that we used for our moss right so it's like a little hill that climbs up but I don't want it to be just a hill I want it to be bumpy as I said so we're going to go for near color we're going to create a noise map for it as well as for inside color for both of these actually so I'm going to I'm going to create or actually let's go for inside color first I'm going to create a noise B map here All right, after messing around with it a little bit further, I fi figured out like a few settings. So fractal 0.5 noise, uh, high at 0.77 and kind of 70% gray for the white color. Uh, seems to kind of work well. There's a little bit of bumpiness, but not too much. Okay, so we have some blending between the rocks and the landscape. Great. Now you can use the same procedure, exactly the same, to create a path. So the way you do this, uh, the way you create a path, and this is going to be, um, I guess, part two of the second tip or second showcase. Uh, the way you create a path is if you just create a curve through the landscape, wherever you want. Sure, something like that. And you just create a pipe I think the pipe should be a little bit bigger so pipe 500 something like that right you can create um, distance texture onto the landscape right and uh, you can use the distance texture to change the material of the landscape to rocks which is exactly what we're going to be doing so let's fish out our landscape master let's start rendering because that's fun don't forget to use a no render material onto your little pipe here so pipe no render apply bam it's gone now and 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 back in landscape master here all we need to do is just create a new layer give it a material called uh, in my case, it's going to be something like dirt. No, landscape, landscape stones. There we go. It's just pebbles, like pebbles material. 
here and blending again distance where are you there we go distance we have as per usual inside separate yes inside is a solid color that is going to be white outside is uh, the far color is going to be black and the near color is going to be white yes and then i all i need to do is that all i need to do is just in my sorry i'm back i'm back here in in my distance texture i need to add objects and the object needs to be this little pipe right here right so add objects bam i have a path that's as easy as it gets and i can move the path and it updates <laughs> except the lights <laughs> the lights went out but if i re-render it's gonna be fine again right so i wonder why, why it's freaking out so much uh, oh perhaps because i'm recording that that might be it because i'm using the graphics card to record anyway um the edge of the path is very sharp right now actually 10 millimeters of, of sharpness or blurriness if you will so i'll just increase it to a meter to give it like a little bit more smoothness like that now we have ourselves a little path how cool is that so i have already set up let me delete this bad boy here probably should stop the render and restart it but before i do um i have set up two pipes already here exactly same procedure that i can just simply add as objects press render by the way the weird letters that it tells you is like the uh id uh, forgot the name guid global global unique identifier something like that um it's it's how rhino saves uh, geometry information either way i think we are getting there right that's how you create a path nothing nothing more right if you want to change materials you can use this tech uh, this approach with this particular blending material and just keep slapping on layers and you d you won't need to model additional stuff on top you just layer 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 materials and you just use geometry to drive where those mater materials are actually placed very very handy let's go back to our uh, named view which you don't actually see yep zero zero one I'm just double clicking this to jump to my um, like preset camera setting or camera position <clears throat> let me type in show so that everything pops up let's wait for this to have a stroke well actually it's it's pretty fast okay and let me show you the last thing it's gonna be grass right so i've already i already have a little surface here that is set up <clears throat> where are you no not you oh it might be locked unlock no objects are locked okay oh yeah grass layer is locked my my apologies so i unlock the grass layer and here i will just slap on the grass important thing do not do not have the render running when you are applying a v-ray fur material onto any object i have already uh, set up the v-ray fur uh, to work with this scene right so that it looks like grass and also i have created a material for the grass which is uh, grass green there we go this material right here if you're interested to know more um either support the channel to get the file or um, check out my other tutorials back in grass right here all i need to do is just enable it this little box right here and if i press play or press real-time render it should work it should work 
uh, because everything like the density and so on all of that is set up and as you can see it does indeed work but we have a little bit of a problem and the problem is called well first of all the problem is called why the hell is all of this is this level of details stuff yes it was so if if your grass looks weird uh, disable level of detail and then it's gonna look great uh, but the problem is called my grass is growing on top of the path my grass is growing on top of the um, stones so we need our density map right here our density map for the grass to be a distance texture and we need to add the objects that is you know everywhere where we won't where we don't want the grass to be so the stones and the paths these guys right here add objects bam immediately breaks the lights I, I i like this okay this is a new thing <laughs> uh obs recording huh anyway uh, it's not not a big deal we just re-render and then all i need to do is just <clears throat> for the uh where was it inside solid needs to be turned on to be black so that everything that is inside of for instance this pipe right here or inside of the rock it's black there's nothing the density is zero it's it's pure black right while everything outside is white with density of one and you can see you know that the, the grass is, is growing only where um like only outside of this pipe so again we need to increase the radius by like a thousand or, or something not a thousand a thousand millimeters and for the fire color i do like to use the noise and this just fixes the like the super regularity of the grass so that it kind of grows more in patches it's hard to see right here but it definitely works right also you can change to if you want it more aggressive you can change to fractal it's going to be more the patches are going to be more aggressive back to our view right here i i think we will need to re-render uh, re-render this for this to actually pop up to actually show and let me just make it a little bit bigger here so i will press the render button and then we will continue once it actually starts rendering there we go so you will notice that i have stopped the render and that's because this is enough for me to see that it's going to be exactly the same as what we see here in the in in photoshop what we saw at the start of the video which indicates that our little journey in learning distance texture is over and i hope this was uh, inspiring exciting and fun to to follow along and that you will be using this tool to bring that you know last little one percent one percent to your uh, to your renders in terms of realism if you're curious about these assets if you're curious about landscape rendering adding the landscape to your scene and creating the landscapes i do have a video for that right here i'll, I'll add it i'll add it to the screen somehow i'll figure it out so if you want to pursue this journey <laughs> uh click that and check that one out for those of you who stayed and didn't click on it, I'll see you in the next one. Later.